so today is uh march 18th it's a yeah. monday and put we're gonna... some cowpea in the ground <laughs> beans we got in town i don't know what variety they are but i have no idea they've got a little bit of a is that the ones that got a little bit of a red yep this is a flow a flow yeah so we're gonna plant them here close to the building site keep an eye on them we'll flag them we dug a little bit of a trench. Uh, yeah, we got some more, but we got a different this variety. Might be a little early, but I just want to see what will happen. We'll try it. Yeah. There's probably wind in the microphone. There's a little bit of a breeze, which a lot of times there's no breeze here, and it's you miserable. Two for a spot? Oh, maybe inch spacing. I don't know. Inch. We'll see what happens. We can, we can transplant. Yeah. You got the auto steer on? Yep. Okay, good. So we went to Ajura, which is, I don't know, 20 minute drive beyond the farm from Nekranza, farther to the kind of the southeast. And we bought two bags, what were they, 150 kg? 150 kg, so 300 kilos of rice. Two different varieties. One's about, well, as far as we can tell, 90 day. And the other is 80. We got about, what, 15 acres to work with. Let's see what happens. So we're going to be in the rice business. And of course, the question I ask is, how are we going to harvest the rice? And by hand. <laughs> by hand. <laughs> we don't have a, a bean head or a cereal head of any kind <clears throat> for the combine yet. So there's a area that we call the palm tree down over there. It's really wet and uh, it got fertilized, planted last spring and we didn't get any grain off of it so it's kind of a waste to try to keep planting it into corn so it's a little wet area and this rice that we'll plant is called dryland rice there's the flood irrigated but we'll grow the variety that's dryland so he's taking a break so it's uh I can just leave the guys it. tell me that it's uh monday we're taking a little break i've been putting uh pulling a gravity wagon out <clears throat> matt and kwame were out in the back uh digging stumps of the backhoe what are we having for lunch? A little bit of Joloft. Joloft. James made it for us? Yep, he packed lunch for us today. Oh, well, that's good. Cal, how's it going? There you go. Bonnie's been running a backhoe with Matt out back, digging out stumps. You're taking all that green sauce. You don't even like it. I like the green sauce. Oh, you were complaining about it last nah, night. Dobby, Dobby, Dobby. <laughs> <laughs> So this afternoon is Tuesday, about two o'clock. The heat is pretty ridiculous. I don't know what the temperature is. Don't know what the heat index. We drink water. It's only our second really day in country and it's tough. However, people that have come in the past are really helpful. We said this for a long time for the People can come over, see what's going on here, help answer questions, solve problems. There's a question on getting the oil drained out of the John Deere combine. <clears throat> Bob Shemick was here in, in August. <clears throat> we worked on it. Brian DeCook, they have ideas. So um, Travis was going to talk to them. The drain tube for the oil, it's in the oddest place. There's like a, like a petcock that leads over to a hose and a drain tube. And so by having a hard time getting to it and figuring it out in the book, luckily Bob knows where it is. How's it going, Matt? It's going better now, man. Two consecutive days, I've uh, been getting my butt kicked by the uh, heat yeah. and the humidity. And uh, I don't know, about lunchtime, I tried to eat something today and uh, my body has decided that I need to focus on one thing at a time, which is managing the heat instead of eating. So, uh, yeah. It's going good though, otherwise, I mean, we're making progress on stuff and we're just, like you said before, we're waiting for rain. Um, can't plan into what we got and uh, would wreck the equipment if we tried anyway. So yep. uh, we're just well, waiting patiently for rain. I'm doing odds and ends and some are kind of odd. Thanks. Thank you. We got the one of the last <clears throat> two gravity wagons out. Got the wheels on, got the hitch on. What we'll do tomorrow is take one of these, or actually two of these pallets we got pallet forks there for the backhoe and also the skid loader and to put the top on and the, and the sides they can move 
guys right up on the side and stand safely on a nice big platform to put that on. So what are, you, what are we up to still today? Travis? Put a puzzle together and we don't have all the pieces. So it would be hard to explain to him what we need because yeah. I need half of this piece yeah. but the other half goes into this. We'll go to magazine tomorrow and then we'll touch base. So do you think that you know that lady in magazine, the old lady? Magazine and uh, oh, we gotta go to Tetsuman. Yeah. So I need to go to Tetsuman, not Macron, though. Yeah. You don't know, like this, right? The big threads on I both need, sides. I need this big jacket. Yep. To go into this. Yep. <laughs> and you need this. So it's 2 30 ish, roughly, in the afternoon. And, uh, Ms. Ema, we moved to the east side of the building. Our weather station there. Oh gosh, what was it? Uh, the 13th or 14th, they actually had 1.1 of rain. And so that was kind of nice. And you go out and dig around and it's dry. Last rain really significant. They had seven tenths here a couple weeks ago, but then prior to that it was, I think it was the 20th of November. So call it almost, whatever that is, almost four months of virtually no rain. Low humidity in the daytime and Probably it was 90 plus <laughs> every day. So a lot of evaporation. So the area we're going through here is kind of a little stream on drains quite a few acres. And before this road was built through here, this was probably a good two feet lower. You crossed at about a mile an hour in full drive on big boulders, or not boulders, but almost bedrock. And it was terrible. Those who haven't seen these videos some people come in on the video new to the YouTube channel of our project in Africa and they don't know what it looked like a year ago and this road is pretty amazing it cost our company I don't remember the exact figure but I know it was tens of thousands of dollars it was a trail like nobody's ever seen it in the United States it was probably worse than a all the old logging trails up northern Minnesota when you're right in sleds. This, uh, it, it was something else. I mean, you, you just creeped along. This road is really, really nice. The other thing that we noticed, there seems to be almost maybe a little more farming that's going on. At least we think so. Of course, there's not real good satellite imagery at all to know. But this road makes it a whole lot easier for people to get in and out. We're very glad to have it. <laughs> Suspension on those and the tires. So, we're having juice boxes. Some of us are more challenged with juice boxes than others. I need to find a five year old on Poconos. I need a Bro. sharper straw. What, what is it called? This is uh, Calliopo, I think. Uh, Calliopo. Yeah, Quite a bit of different stuff in here, though. Calibre. I was reading it this morning. Yeah, fruity mix. Yep. Orange, pineapple, passion fruit, kiwi, apple, apricot, guava, banana, mango, just to name a few. It's good stuff. Great taste, less filling? Mm, no, nah, the water had that pretty much nailed. Yep. Yep. This is good stuff, though. This nope. is good. So this is Marty's, and we stop here on a pretty regular basis. Almost every day, we get water, bottled water. We go through probably three cases of water a day. And really a nice fella. Got lots of stuff. We enjoy him. Crackers and soap, toilet paper. Fridge there for some stuff, and this is Marty. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you too. I miss you. Everybody, uh, everybody Bye. gets to say hi to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a great day. Good to you.